All right, today I'm going to show you how that you are able to take an action camera and convert it for IR or UV, and they're very simple. And it comes in a really nice case. It's under $40. It shoots 1080p, and this is all the good stuff that you get with it. It comes with a lot of stuff, a spare battery. So we're going to get into showing you how to take this camera and make it IR UV capable so that you can use it for ghost hunting. So the first thing that we need to do is get it out of its waterproof case. Put the case aside here. We'll take off the little lens protector plastic. So we have to check this camera to see first off does it have a battery in it and I believe that it does. So we'll Pop the battery out. Always take the battery out of the camera first. That's the first thing that you need to do. So, very simple camera. It's got a nice two inch uh, LCD screen on the back. The microphone is right there. Menu and a little Wi Fi if you want to use it with your phone. Uh, shutter button to turn on and turn off. Now, the batteries that this come with is a 1050 milliamp hour battery. Now you may think that this doesn't last for very long and it'll you probably will get about an hour and a half out of it, but you can use one of those external battery chargers for your phone that have a USB to a micro uh, or mini USB. Uh, actually micro USB but you can plug that in and have the camera actually working while it's running off of your external battery pack while it's charging the internal battery so I've gotten as much as about five hours worth of uh, recording out of a little action camera like this okay just to show I've got the battery in it is on right now and it will not, let me turn off this overhead light. I'll grab a IR light and show you that it can barely see IR. You can see right there. But so will most cameras, they just barely see it. Like you can see right here, it's not super bright but it sees it but we're going to change that just by taking off the ir cut filter okay so what we're going to do is always power the unit off pull out the battery very important you don't want to short anything while you're messing around with this now this is very easy to take apart this is the tools that i'm going to use an exacto knife a very small flat hitch screwdriver and a pair of pliers and I'm just going to try to get into the lip of the front of the camera here. Sometimes you got to find a good edge to get under and snap it up just a hair. Stick in your flathead. Continue prying. And then you get to this point. Now this is yet another lens cap cover right here, so we're just going to pop this guy off. And that lifts straight up. Pay attention to the orientation. There's three little male pins and then three female pins. Now what they do with these is once they set the focus at the factory on um, these cameras, they'll put a little drop of glue in. So what we need to do is cut the glue loose. So I don't know, I'm gonna try to see if I can zoom in on where it focuses, but you'll see a little bit of glue right in here. And this is where the X-Acto knife comes in handy because right around that edge of the threads is where we're gonna cut. So what I want to do is take a look, see where the glue is. I see a little dab of glue right over here. I'm going to take the X-Acto knife 
And this one's very dull, but it still works. And you just want to just take your time. Try not to mess up the threads. Sometimes these companies, they are very overzealous with the amount of glue that they use. Sometimes, I guess it just depends on the tech uh, that's putting these cameras together on exactly how much they use. Because I've seen them to where it's only just barely a drop. And that's really all that's required. Now, some people may ask, do I have to go back and re-glue this? No, because of this outer ring, once you've got the camera lens screwed back in, you'll notice that and whoever worked on this one definitely was overzealous with the glue. All right, whoever the tech was on this one, I just jumped ahead because they put a ton. Yeah, let me try to get some light on that so that you can see, but they put a ton of glue all the way around the outside edge. So this is where your pliers come in handy. So you want to gently grab onto the outside lens. Do not squeeze, because if you squeeze really tight, you're actually going to break the outer glass of the lens. And then you just turn it to unscrew it. Now take your time unscrewing this. And there's a couple things that you have to be careful of. So we're getting the lens out. I'm going to tip this forward and I'll tell you why here in just a second. Right when I get to the end of the threads. Okay. So you see the amount of glue that's around. Inside, I don't know if you can tell, but right inside there, that little rectangle shaped piece, that is the image sensor. So you want to be very careful not to get any debris down in the image sensor itself because that will cause you issues. Second off, you want to be careful with the lens assembly itself. You don't want, you can touch this side all you want to because you can clean that up later, but this back side you can't. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just pop off the little IR filter. I don't know if this can be picked up on camera or not. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it. But that IR filter has a pinkish tone to it. And that's what we're going to get rid of off that glass, is that pinkish tone. So you just have to gently dig into the side. It's a very thin layer. And you just need to just get up underneath it and pick that layer off. So now we got that entire piece off right there. And now gently screw it back in. These threads are super, super easy to misthread. So you want to try to eyeball it to where you think that you're kind of straight. And then give it a slight little turn. If it feels like it's going incorrectly, then you have done well. I'm going to push this or turn it in until it kind of stops. Because that kind of lets me know right where the old glue was. So that will give us an opportunity to get pretty close. At this point, you can stick in the battery. Turn the camera on. Now, some people will use the uh, HDMI out and stick it into a TV and adjust the um, focus of it because turning the dial here actually 
when you, I mean, turning the lens is actually what focuses the lens. Focus is almost there. All I have to do is just play around, tighten a little bit more. And just looking at the, the back of the screen, when you're kind of shooting through the room, you can get a little rough idea of how focused that it is. And let's see. No, you can go through the resolutions on this. It's got 1080p, uh, 30 frames a second, 720 at 60, 720 at 30, VGA. Who in the world uses VGA anymore? But anyway, I use uh, 1080 at 30 on this particular camera. You got TV out. This is where you're going to be using uh, if you want to focus on a larger screen. At this point, you see a little bit of that glue right there. I'm going to try to fetch that out just because I don't want it touching anything inside if it doesn't necessarily have to. That was the glue that was around the inside of it. And I have something on the back of the lens. You see that little mark right there? Got to fix that real quick. It had a little uh, speck that actually fell down on the image sensor that I was just talking about earlier. But it was just a tiny little speck. Now, what I've noticed is once, for some reason, when you take out this IR cut filter, and just to show you how small it is, there it is on my finger. Once you take that out, for some reason you have to tighten up the lens slightly, maybe another millimeter further than what it was originally to get a good focus on the camera. But I don't know if you can tell right there, we've got a pretty good sharpness going on. Pretty good focus, but the main test is going to be does it see IR now? So you remember earlier, the IR, it could barely see it. You just saw just the little dots. Now we're going to use the same IR light and POW. Now you see how it totally brightens it up. Now there's some drawbacks. For those of you that have had altered cameras, you will notice that the image will change over time. It'll go from a purplish hue to a pinkish hue, and that's the camera's image sensor when you have it on auto white balance. And it's trying to figure out what's going on. Now, there's one of two ways that you can fix that yourself. One of them is going to be you can change the resolution in your menu system. I mean, change the uh, the color mode in the menu system. So. Just go down over here to color. We can either have color, you can have black and white, or sepia. So you can change that to black and white, and it still gives you the same amount of detail. Or in your uh, software, editing software, you can just change it to black and white, which is what I do with a lot of the action camera footage that has been converted to IR. So anyway. That is that. I think that it looks really good in focus. I was just getting out of camera view just to kind of pan the room. And what we do is, first I'll turn this off. And you kind of put everything back together in reverse mode of what it was to be when you first started. So we've got the three male ends. We're going to plug those in and they kind of just snap into place. So now that is there, that is protecting it. I'll clean off the lens while I'm at it. And then we put the outside cover back on and it just kind of snaps into place. So anyway, so that's all back together. Now we can stick the battery back in. 
So this original battery, battery only goes one way. If you look down there, you got your three tabs here, three tabs inside, that goes in there. This clicks into place and turn it on. Shazam, now you have yourself an IR action camera that you can use on investigations. So not too shabby, very easy, and a, this little camera kit here, I'll put a link in the description below where you can check it out for yourself, but it comes, it's on sale in the link, but it comes with a plethora of little GoPro items, GoPro accessory style stuff, nice little skeleton case, and you stick this into here, it's a tight fit, so, but boom. Now you've got that onto there, you can get yourself a little mini tripod since it has a quarter twenty screw on the bottom. You can screw that in. It'll hold up to a 32 gig card and you can always get one of those external battery chargers that I was talking about and that one there will fit right inside of here. Boom. As soon as you plug it in, see it automatically shows that it's charging, but when you tap the front button to turn it on, now it's on, you can hit record, and now you can get, like I said, I've gotten five to six hours of use out of these external battery packs that you can run and record and it still keeps the battery charged so not a bad little thing so that's my little uh, contribution to the paranormal field if you guys are interested in it like i said i'll put a link in the description below and follow the details is very simple the only things that you have to watch out for when you're doing this is take your time don't get rushed because it's very easy to damage the outer ring if you clamp down with a pair of pliers too hard and the main thing is to cut that glue loose and you see the glue here somebody was super overzealous with the glue once i've got this together and i got this outer ring i don't have to worry about refocusing it or it going out of focus so anyway i hope that you guys found this uh helpful and if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe today. By the way, we've got a cool investigation coming up of a hotel, 10,000 square feet, 43 bedrooms, and it's from the 1880s, and it's supposed to be super active. And I'll actually be taking this camera along because I've got a couple of these, as well as a couple of the inexpensive 4K action cameras that I've converted. So I hope you guys found this useful, and I will talk to you later. Bye. And here's just a quick test just to show you. Boom. IR. And there's the IR light. What it can do in a dark room. Just to show that it works.